In this video, I want to cover the biped tools that I have here. Um, they range from real simple, quick, quicky things to things that are a little bit more complicated. For example, the Fig Mode hotkey setup and toggle. Now, I have this on a hotkey currently, so if I go Shift B, since I don't have one set up yet, you can see that it pops up with a list of all the bipeds in the scene, of course. In this case, is just one. So I'm going to say assign a biped to Fig hotkey. Now every time I hit Shift B, it's going to go from animation to figure mode. Um, the first time I do it, obviously, since there is no biped attached to it or signified or uh, assigned, <laughs> then it'll allow me to choose it. If I want, I can manually run the setup and choose a different biped. In this case, it's just the one. So Shift B, Shift B, back and forth. So there's that. Now um, the Hyper Bip selector. See, I have it here as well. Um, I can double click here, click that. This will allow me, I mean, you've probably seen the jam tools of this, um, and they're awesome. I just wanted to do a little different flavor of it um, that was more in line with the way that I rig, but it kind of works for anything. Um, I can select the look at controls for my dude, as well as the right and left individual look at controls, or I can select, say, each individual body part, like a head, all the neck links, because there's five in my rigs. I can hit select the clavicle, you know, I can hold control and select multiple objects. Um, I can right click on an arm and say select left arm, hold control, select right arm. You know, um, you'll see it doesn't include the fingers, I'll show you why. Center of mass, pelvis. Now I can grab the first spine link here, or I can grab the top spine link because, uh, let me put it in figure mode here and show you why. As you can see, the way that I rig, the top spine link covers the entire uh, upper part of the chest because, I mean, that really doesn't deform anyway. Uh, your, your rib cage pretty much holds that area pretty solid. So I usually do that. So, um, and then the first spine link I typically use as like the top part of the pelvis. So I tell my animators not to touch it to basically use it as a last case scenario. And then I use the middle three to do most of the actual bending so if I click this you'll see it'll just grab the middle three if there's a 20 spine links it'll grab all the middle ones leaving the top and the bottom one alone so I can grab those three or the top or the bottom or I can click this and grab everything except for the bottom because like I said I don't you know use that for animation typically because mocap usually doesn't get mapped to that particular uh, joint but I can hit control and click that and get that as well okay also, I can right click on the center of mass and say select all, but what it's doing is it's selecting all the animatable parts. It's not selecting the twist bones and it's not selecting anything that's not animatable in a biped. Um, you can see there's some grayed out areas. The two ponytails are grayed out because this character kind of, you know, obviously doesn't have ponytails. Also, he doesn't have a tail or horse links for the um, legs. Um, if you click right here, you'll see you get the finger selector. Now in biped, you can have up to four finger links because you can do metacarpals. And what you can do is click that to select an entire finger, like so. Or you can click on individual finger links. Or I can click this, control, and click the other ones if I want. Click the palm. Um, you can get the thumb. You'll see how these are grayed out because there's only three links. If you have only one finger, it'll only show one finger. Uh, so it depends on what you got going. Um, also, you can see there's three buttons for props. Those three buttons allow you to um, select the props that are active. Now, there is also you can also create extra bones with biped, which fortunately at this point finally works and works very well from what I've uh, experienced so far. But there's no way to directly access those through MaxScript yet, or at least I don't know yet. Uh, no one's told me how to do it. So um, I'm still looking into that, uh, but I haven't looked really hard because I've been really busy trying to get everything else to work. But, you know, watch out for updates. Now, you'll see this drop-down right here. And what this drop-down allows you to do is run particular tools, whatever tools you might have. So in this case, I have this character. If there was more than one, uh, they would be listed here. And... I'm going to show you how I have this set up where I can detach a rig from the biped itself. 
this allows me to you can see how quickly I can move no matter how much deformation is happening it's not going to bother me because it's all offloaded but what I can also do is reattach the deformation rig so it'll start moving with the biped again um, and you can see I've got other uh, flavors here um, these are all inactive uh, in the script that you guys have uh, or they might not be because uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in an INI file so that you know if you have a different type of uh, rig that you want to attach or detach you'll be able to do it from here or run any real tools that you want on a biped but basically like I said you know this allows you to say detach a rig and then reattach it at any point what's cool is now I can take this rig and delete it and merge in an updated version and then just reattach it that way um, I don't have to do any loading or saving of animation it's all the same animation all I'm doing is removing the, de the deformation rig and putting it back um, so that's the hyper bip selector um, let's see toggle these are just hotkeys so you can do posture copy and paste and paste opposite you can just put those on a hotkey rather than having to go here and you know create a collection and then hit copy and then paste blah 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 so that just makes that uh, a little easier also I added these two scripts select all animal animatable biped objects which is the same as uh, right clicking all on the bip selector um, and then I also have this uh, where you can select all the animatable biped and it'll select all of its keys I can't remember why I created this script, but I do know that I had to do it for some reason. Sorry. Uh, I think it was so that I know that I have all the keys selected so that I could shift the animation, but to be honest, I don't remember why I created it. Um, but So those are all the individual biped tools. Um, actually, what I might do is just jump into the cloth tools because there is this tool here called Prep Bipeds for Cloth Sim. What this does is, uh, as you can see, the animation starts from frame 334 and goes to 422. What I can do is uh, select, I'm going to go ahead and select the center of mass real quick. Um, I'm also going to hide these drivers here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just double click on this and it's going to say you're about to prepare a biped is you know if you have multiple selected it'll do multiple I'm sure you want to continue I'm just gonna say yes and what it does is it saves off the range that you originally were working in and then goes back I think 20 frames and puts a figure mode this is awesome for doing clausum so you can see here from 334 to 422 I have the same animation but uh, all the other keys have been deleted and I can see now that I'm going from the figure mode that the biped originally was created and then I'm transitioning into the start of the animation and then the animation is happening this is great for doing cloth sims because you're starting from your neutral pose but it's at the location where the animation is starting you can see the center of mass isn't moving at all but the rest of the body is and then the animation starts so those are the biped tools the next video will cover all of the different bones tools that I have.